I'm doing a live Q&A, surprise, usually I schedule this thing, but uh, I had a little bit of time, so I figured I'd hop on, so if you're joining the chat, just come on in, I'm kind of paying attention, I just want to share this on my other pages, so peeps know that we're up in here doing this thing, um, boo, 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 boo. let me just get my share on, all right. Got that going. Here on my other page. It is hard getting all this stuff set up. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's um, everywhere here. I'll do a little Instagram thing too. By the way, if you're watching this and you ain't following me on Instagram, you're missing out, all right? Because I got all sorts of cool stuff on Instagram. So let me do a little live thing real quick on Instagram. Yo, what's up everybody? I am live on my Facebook page right now. So come on over, it's the Rewire channel at Facebook. I'm answering all your mental health and addiction recovery questions. So come and join us. All right, let me just add this to my uh, good old story on here. Do -do 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 -do. Cool. All right. So, yeah. So, anyways, um, I was gonna do. Uh, I'm starting a podcast. I keep saying that, but I haven't yet. Um, I'm starting a podcast, and if you're in here, please say hi so I know that you can hear me. But anyways, I'm starting a podcast, and my my best my bestie, my BFF, Brosny, was gonna come on here, but um, yeah, she's uh, she's a little under the weather, uh, so we're probably gonna reschedule that. It's gonna be a really good one too. Like, we're gonna be talking about. Um, just how to deal with trauma and things like that after, you know, sexual abuse, sexual assault and all that, because I am somebody who is not uh, a victim of that, you know, and I make my videos as best as I can based on the science and the research and other people's experiences, um, the friends I have who have been through it and different practices to help overcome it. But it's kind of difficult to, hey, what's up, James? But it's hard for me to go over those topics because I am clearly a man and I haven't been through those things. So when my friend Brosny is feeling better, we are going to go ahead and do that live stream. No, it's not going to be a live stream. It's going to be a podcast. And uh, yeah, when I get that up, I will link it to everybody. It'll be on the YouTube channel too. And if you're not on the YouTube channel, I don't know what you're doing. But anyways, I wanted to hop on because I haven't made a video today and I haven't done one of these live streams in a while. So I wanted to hop on and answer any questions people have about depression, anxiety, addiction recovery, trauma, bipolar, uh, borderline personality disorder. That one is a fun one. Um, yeah, and uh, I hope y'all people can hear me. Um, but yeah, anyways, so let's talk about some of the stuff that I've been putting up on my channel late, lately. Let me, um, I'm over here with my double monitors and stuff like that. And, oh wait, I just, uh, I just uploaded a video to my son's channel. By the way, shameless plug for my son's channel. Dillian Dad Gaming, it's pretty dope. Um, but anyways, a lot of the videos I've been doing lately, I'm trying to... I'm trying to put up a lot of videos on my YouTube channel that I've been meaning to do for a long, long, long time. And a lot of them are just like how to get help for addiction. Um, like I put up an addiction test. I also um, talk about opiate withdrawal, which uh, yeah, I've been through cold turkey. It's not fun. Um, but the other thing is too, I'm trying to put up some more meditation things and mindfulness. Um, has anybody out there watching, has anybody checked out the three tips for social anxiety yet? If you have, go ahead and let me know in here. I wanna know what uh, what you all think. Because social anxiety is something that keeps coming up over and over and over again. Whenever I talk about anxiety, people talk about social anxiety and it's something that I'm very well versed in. Uh, the story I often tell people 
about my social anxiety was it's kind of hard like I need to figure out how to animate this but when I was working um, one of my first jobs uh, after I got clean a couple eh, three years ago three or four years ago was my first job after being clean and like I was so socially anxious and I would go out to walk down this long hallway to go have a cigarette and at the end of that hallway you saw this patio right and like whenever I saw people on that patio I would just duck to the side, I would go in the bathroom and I would just stand there for like two or three minutes like an idiot because I was just freaking out in my own head. Like if I went out on the patio with these people, like what am I gonna say? What am I gonna talk about? What are they gonna ask me? What are they gonna, blah, blah, blah. you know, all these things. And I was just like, you know what? It's easier just to go pretend like I'm going to the bathroom and not have to uh, go out there and talk to anybody. So that is how bad my social anxiety used to be. And like now it's crazy that I can even do something like this. Like there's a few of you in the live stream right now. None of you are really talking, but I can sit here and be completely comfortable in my own skin, just talking my face off, especially when it comes to something that I'm passionate about, such as mental health. And what time is it? Seven o'clock? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, well, seven o'clock my time. I figured a bunch of people would have been on here asking their questions, but it looks like people are like coming and going and not really participating. But I'll sit here and I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk all day long. I personally got over my own anxiety when I started working at the bar. <laughs> at the bar. So if those of you who can't see the chat because I'm uploading this to YouTube, I got over my own anxiety when working at the bar. And how was that? I'm going to keep talking, but like, was it because you were interacting with people? Like your job made you interact with people on a regular basis? Is that what helped out with that type of social anxiety? Because for me, like, social anxiety was one of the main reasons I started drinking and using. Like... In high school, it was very difficult for me to have these conversations with people. Hey, what's up, Tiffany? How you doing? Well, my buddy, uh, did you already leave town? Are you back? Anyways, uh, but like that's one of the uh, one of the reasons I started like drinking and using was because of my social anxiety. Like throughout like my whole life, whenever I was having a conversation, especially with girls, like my brain was just going a million miles a minute. And then when you get caught up in your own head, you start to sound even dumber because you start slipping up on your own words and all that. And the first time I got drunk, I was like, oh, dang, like, I don't care what anybody thinks. And that's one of the reasons I kept drinking, kept using. Like, um, yeah, there you go. Helped you out with conversations. Like, for me, when I was having conversations with people at work, like even customers, even clients, like, I was in the car service industry for about two uh, two years before I got fired and went to another one. But anyways, like it was difficult for me to have a conversation with a customer, especially when I was like, it was a commission job. I had to sell repairs for cars and like, it was difficult. Like it was difficult because part of my social anxiety was because I was a people pleaser. And like, I know a lot, man, that would be a good video to talk about. A lot of social anxiety comes from just being so worried about the judgments from other people. And like, when I'm telling somebody that their car's broken and it needs A, B or C repair and they start losing their mind on me, I'll try to keep my mouth clean. Like it, made my brain go even faster and it was brutal but when I was drunk or high like I was getting drunk and high at work like I just really didn't even care what a customer client whoever had to say to me like it's terrible to say but um but yeah that was one of my worries about getting clean was how am I going to deal with social situations now that I'm sober and I talked about it a little bit in my three tips for social anxiety video like when I, in that, in my video where I talk about, um, you know, I was getting invited to coffee, like for any of you who are in recovery, you probably read between the lines and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Like people after the meeting, they were inviting me out to coffee and I was like, oh no, I gotta, I gotta get home and do my laundry or, or whatever. And, um, but finally I just started saying yes for coffee and I would just stand there looking like a complete 
idiot. And I just learned how to get comfortable being uncomfortable. So now we got some people up in here. So anybody who's just joining me, like I'm here to answer any of the questions you have about anxiety, depression, mental illness, medications, therapy, meditation, um, mindfulness, if any of you have questions about that, if any of you have questions about addiction, recovery, what it's like working at a rehab, how to get to rehab, like pretty much anything. I need y'all to start putting some questions up in here because that's what I'm here for. I know everybody has questions. Like when I do this at my job, when I work at the drug and alcohol rehab center, like I kind of talk crap to them. I'm like, oh, so you know everything there is to know about uh, mental health and uh, recovery and things like that. So I know all of you in here have questions. So somebody, somebody break that ice and like, let's get this, let's get this thing rolling. Last time, see, see my girl Tristan's in here. That's my boo. That's one of the reasons I'm on here. She's in California, in California right now. Um, but yeah, last time she, she got this thing going, but anyways, like, uh, I know that see, okay. So let's talk about this since nobody's asking questions yet. Christmas is coming up. And one thing I tried to do on the YouTube channel was trying to uh, do something more uh, Thanksgiving related and all of those videos tanked. Like there was maybe one or two that did decent, but like, so I don't know if I'm gonna do the same thing for Christmas. I might, but I might not. Um, what's up, Jay? And uh, okay, here's one from Tiffany. How do you handle anxiety now that you're sober? So one thing, Tiffany, um, especially now that I'm sober, medications, like non-narcotic medications, can everybody hear that? Non-narcotic medications. Um, after I got clean, I was diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder along with like kind of minor depression. Um, but like when I got clean, I started feeling the way I did before I started using alcohol and drugs. And like, I was like, what's going on? And I, it, I, it turns out I had anxiety. So they prescribed me a medication called Lexapro. Um, Lexapro is great. I know at the treatment center I work at, we kind of like, we do prescribe it sometimes, sometimes we don't. It works for a lot of people. Some people have weird reactions to it. Um, it makes them like groggy. Um, I've heard it, uh, you know, decreases sex drive and things like that. Um, me, my experience has been fine. It's really helped my head a lot. Um, so medication is one of them. But Tiffany, what I will tell you is I started meditating when my medications were no longer taking care of all of my anxiety. So now it's a combination of medication and meditation. Um, but, you know, it took me a while, Tiffany. Um, it, you know, a lot of my anxiety started going away. To be honest, a lot of my anxiety started going away two, three years sober. Um, I still had it, but it was manageable. Um, being able to be in front of people every single day doing groups and stuff like that, like it's helped me break through it, but also my meditation practice. Uh, Ray says, do you use PTO more for mental health and getting recharged or for vacationing? That's funny, Ray. Like, honestly, like I don't take PTO that much. Like when I, that's, that's really good that you asked me that. Um, I'm a workaholic and I'm gonna do a video soon about like having a work-life balance. Like I am super duper busy. For example, for example, so yesterday my son was with his mom all day long. My girlfriend just left to go visit her family in Sacramento. So Saturday, like yesterday, most of the day I had just nothing but free time to myself. And I'm like, yeah, free time to myself. And like, I was going nuts. I go crazy when I'm not doing something productive um and and you know like ray for me like i think the trick the ultimate trick is is learning how to stay mentally healthy like regardless like i i love my job um like my position at the treatment center for those of you who don't know like i pretty much always get to be the good guy <laughs> and uh like, I'm very fortunate for that. Like, trust me, there's people who don't like what I have to say, but like, when like real stuff escalates at the treatment center, like, it's really not my problem. So, um, I don't have a very stressful job, but I was reading this book called The Happiness Advantage too, and I think, like, I need to make more videos about this too when it comes to your job, to your career, and it talks about people who see like, 
their their job or their career as just a job and then when people look at it as a higher purpose so for example like I see my job as having a higher purpose because I'm constantly helping people. So like tomorrow's Monday and I'm not even stressed out. When I'm going through my Instagram or I'm going through uh, Facebook and everybody's like, oh no, I got Monday tomorrow and everybody's posting memes and little videos about how stressed they are about going back to work tomorrow. Like Monday to me is literally just another day. You know what I'm saying? So like, um, I think mental health days for the majority of people is a really good thing. And I think that more employers should um, be better about letting their employees take mental health days. Like right now, I think the vast majority of employers really, um, really look down on that. Like a lot of you out there watching this, like just think for a second, like I don't know where you work or who your employer is, but think about it for a second. Like if you went to your boss and said, hey, I need to take a mental health day, right? Like what, what kind of reaction would you get? You know, I'm guessing the vast majority of you watching this right now, your employer would look at you like you're crazy. You know what I mean? Um, but like, this is a real thing. We live in a, a time where, Depression and anxiety are affecting more people than ever before, so it would only make sense that more people need to take uh, mental health days. Um, but yeah, man, um, uh, the last thing about PTO, like um, I took a week off to go to uh, visit my mom, um, take my son and visit my mom and family in California for a week, and like I was staying productive, you know? Um, I don't know, being productive is how I manage my mental health. Because uh, yeah, like, I, being a recovering addict, I really see my time as very, very valuable. And I think, I think everybody needs to see their time as very valuable. It's the most valuable asset you could ever have. And um, like, if I just took a day off and I sat around and watched like five movies and played video games all day, like for me personally, I don't know about the rest of you, for me personally, I would be like, man, I just completely wasted a day. You know what I mean? So like, I, I like to be productive. I like to do something that's gonna give me some kind of result. I don't know. My my mental health days are are a lot are a lot different. Like every day for me is a mental health day. Um, so James, could you see your job as a stepping stone to a dream? You know, that's wow. Geez, it's getting deep up in here. Like for me personally, I'm guessing you're asking me personally. Uh, my job personally, like it it is a dream come true. <laughs> my cat's running around in the background. He, she is freaking out. But anyways. Uh, my my job is my my dream. Like it's a dream I never even knew I had. I honestly never thought in a million years I'd be working at a drug and alcohol treatment center, and I love it so much. That's why I do stuff like this. Like I I work at a uh, <laughs> I work at a a publicly uh, public traded uh, rehab center where you could private pay for it if you got a ton of money or your insurance covers it. And every day, like I try to teach my I try to teach my clients that like they need to be really grateful. You know, you always get like nobody wants to no, well, I don't know. Some people want to be in rehab, but you get a lot of people coming into rehab. They don't want to be there. They want to be home. They want to, you know, oh, I don't need this and da 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 da. And like I try to remind them like there are people out there on the streets right now who would cut off their leg to have the opportunity to come into rehab. Um so like I I started doing my YouTube stuff or Facebook Live or whatever, I started doing it because I realized how many people don't have the opportunity. Like, for me, it's a dream come true to be in a position where people actually care about their mental health and they want to hear what I have to say about it using things that have worked for me, using things that I learned about science and the, the medical advances that we're making, like advocacy, like... I'm I'm living my dream every day. And like that kind of goes back to the last question about, you know, my mental health days. Like every single day I'm doing something. Like I always joke around about all these people who have these like existential crises and they're like, what's the meaning of life? I don't know what the meaning of life is. Oh. And they get all depressed and down. Like my purpose in life is to help others and give them hope. And with that 
as my purpose in life, like every single day is an amazing day for me. Like lately I've been getting people from all over the world messaging me on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, you need to. But I've had people from um, Australia. I had somebody from the Dominican Republic. I have a few people from the United Kingdom who have been messaging me like, like what? Like I used to be this hopeless pill snorting alcoholic five and a half years ago and now I have people actually turning to me for advice to help them better their mental and emotional well-being so like I, I'm pretty much already at my dream which is crazy because five years ago I was almost dead um, but yeah there's always more that I want to do I, I want to scale this I want to reach more people I want to be able to pop on to a live stream and have thousands of people but I appreciate every single one of you you know so like always like it sounds dumb and I don't like asking people to, but like share my stuff, share it, share it with people. Like you, you know, somebody who struggles with anxiety, depression, or addiction. So you see me post a video, share it with other people and say, yo, I know you're going through a hard time. Check this dude out. Like, I just want to be able to help as many people as possible. Katie Kelly. My cat's name is Maya. That's my cat's name. And I've had her for, how long have I had her now? Has it been a year? It's been like a year. I don't know. Like, it's brutal. So, uh, yeah, I actually got her um, from, I have a friend, and she does a lot with, um, like, pet foster homes and adopting pets and stuff like that. And, like, I was just out of nowhere. I was like, I need an animal. I want a cat. So I asked her. This cat is running all over the place. <laughs> um, yeah, her name's, her, her name's Maya. I just went and got her, and, yeah, she was like a year old. When I got her, so now she's about to. <laughs> you can see her in the background. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, but yeah, yeah, and everybody, uh, if you're just now joining us, I'm answering any questions you have about anxiety, depression, addiction, medications, advocacy stuff. If you have any questions about the stigma, um, if any of you have been watching my uh, my YouTube channel lately and have questions about any of the recent videos I've po po put up, um, something that. I I've been posting a lot about, and like I was gonna wait until February because it's like uh, Valentine's Day. Um, but some of you have probably noticed I've been posting a lot of videos about relationships. Um, so if any of you have questions about relationship stuff, like feel free to ask me and quit looking at my cat. Uh, oh, there you go, Katie. Awesome. I love it. Uh, but like relationships, relationships are the downfall for so many people, just so many people like they were the downfall for me too. And, uh, and yeah, like I, I had to spend 18 months single in order to be able to potentially have healthy relationships. Far too many people go from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship and they wonder why they're never getting better and it's because they've never taken a, the time to step back, heal themselves, figure out what this uh, this pattern is and then move forward and get into healthy relationships. Um, oh, Larissa, you just jumped in. You missed it. Um, yeah, I take a anti-anxiety slash anti-depression medication called uh, Lexapro. Um, there was a few years back, two, two or three years back. Actually, it's actually you know what? Now that I remember it, two or three years back, um, right before I started meditating, I was having a lot of mood swings. Like I'm talking like, woo, like ups, way down. Like it was almost like. Uh, I, I don't even know how to explain it. But anyways, um, I'm on a lot of the same medications my mom is. And my mom was on a mood stabilizer. And she told me to ask my doctor about the mood stabilizer. Now, Lexapro is something that your primary care doctor can often prescribe. But the mood stabilizer, I would have had to go to see a psychiatrist. And this is going to sound terrible. And please uh, uh, don't do what I did. Like, well, I don't know, because it had a good result, but um, I would have had to see a psychiatrist, and that was a lot of work. I had to set up an appointment, all this other stuff, and you know, then there's insurance and co-pays and blah, 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 and that's kind of what, what's up, Haley? That's kind of what led me to meditation. Like I was at a place where my, my brain was going nuts and I needed something. I needed to do something, and that's when I really got into meditation, so if you need another reason to meditate, like I was gonna get on a mood stabilizer, I didn't have to because I started meditating. 
So yeah, the only mental health uh, medication I'm on right now is Lexapro. The generic name of it is Escitalopram. Um, but yeah, and all the, by the way too, a topic that I'm really trying to um, learn more about is bipolar disorder. That's something that a lot of people struggle with. And uh, there's this movie, there's this movie out and it's called like something with fire. Ugh. Gosh, I forgot. Um, yeah, it's something with fire, but it's all about, uh, it's a it's a couple, and I guess they're, I think they're like bipolar, and then they stop taking their bipolar medications, like together, and things go downhill real fast, and they go to a psych ward, but yeah, I want to learn a little bit more about bipolar disorder, because that's, that's, that's one uh, mental illness that I'm not as well versed in as I would like to be, so, uh, so yeah, and I'm, I, I know a few people who, who manage their bipolar disorder, what's up, Josh? And um, I'm trying to get one of them to be on my podcast. One of them's actually local. But that's the other thing, too. I've been reaching out to a lot of people on um, Instagram and making a lot of connections and friends and stuff. So my podcast is going to get rolling. Um, but, but yeah, everybody, if you're just now joining, I'm answering mental health, addiction, recovery questions, medication, meditation, uh, rehab stuff. I was diagnosed with bipolar two. See, and like, that's the thing I, I don't even realize either. There's like stages of bipolar and, and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Stacy. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, shoot me, uh, shoot me a private message and yeah, we could talk about it and uh, maybe I'll have you as a, a guest on my podcast once I get it rolling. By the way, can we sec take a second to acknowledge again how how great the quality is on this microphone? Yeah, I'm really happy about it. I just recorded a video with my, my son and he got to use the microphone and it was fantastic. But, but yeah, anyways, um, yeah, it's crazy too, like going back to the whole like relationship thing. Um, I deal with a lot of people who were in a position that I was where they split up with their 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 uh, their child's mother or their child's father and then like that whole deal. I'm trying to write a short book on that, but I've been so, 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 so busy. I haven't had a chance to. I was gonna do it for uh, the month of November, the National Writing Month, and I got busy, and it's not an excuse because I did a whole video about it and how I was gonna stay accountable, and uh, I kind of uh, blew that one. Um, but yeah, it often um, it often amazes me how, how great the relationship between my son's mom um, and I, how, how great that relationship is. So, so yeah, if any of you have like not only mental health questions, but like, um, relationship questions, like, and I know some of those get personal, so I don't know if you want to ask them in a Facebook live stream, but if you do like go for it, even if it's like, I have a friend who struggles with this, um, okay. You know what? Since none of you are asking me questions, let's talk about this subject real quick. So, so yeah, I know James, I need to start. Yeah, he was saying books take forever. I need to set a schedule and just write like a thousand words a day. That's what I was gonna do and yeah. But um, so let's talk about breakups real quick. Something that keeps coming up today, if any of you follow me on Instagram, like I just posted um, a picture today and it just said, stop judging your emotions, right? And so many times, like when people go through breakups, like I don't get it like, I get it because I used to do it too after a breakup, but I I don't get it because it seems it it just like looking back at it now, it's like, why do we judge ourselves? Like when people go through a breakup, they're like, I don't want to be sad anymore. I shouldn't be sad and I shouldn't be this. And you know, we're affected by this breakup. Like you had love, you had feelings, you made plans for the future and all these other things. And then people go through a breakup and they don't want to feel that way anymore, or they think they shouldn't feel this way, or they should feel a certain way. And like, it's, it's something that I need to really dive into the neuroscience of in a video, but like feelings are meant to be felt. Okay, like if any of you are watching this right now, like I don't care if this if this pertains to you when it comes to relationships, but just please heed my words. 
Feelings are meant to be felt, okay? When we don't feel our emotions, when we don't let them just run their course, they sit underneath the system, uh, underneath the skin, underneath that surface, and they get worse and worse and worse. And what they do is they bury themselves into our subconscious and we start to experience symptoms of anxiety and depression. Um, a lot of us have anger issues and we snap at people because we're not just sitting back and acknowledging these emotions. Like if I could just teach people to just have a little bit of faith in this thing, it's just, we're so afraid of emotions. And like, I, uh, it's crazy what meditation and mindfulness has done for me. Like we're so afraid of emotions. And like, now that I look at it, I, I, like it just seems like such a silly, such a silly concept. Like, when we, like, they're just feelings. They're just feelings. Like, nobody's, like, punching us in the face or stabbing us. Like, I know it can feel like that, but what meditation does is it helps us uh, separate ourselves. Okay, so I'm reading this new book. It's a great book. I don't know if any of you like to read or if you're interested, but this book I'm reading is called Why Buddhism is Real. I was looking for books on Buddhist philosophy. But anyways, there's a quote in there, or this, there's a story in there from this great meditation teacher, um, the author of the book. He was working with this great meditation teacher. The guy's name is Jack Kornfield. And he says, as you're meditating, right? And as these thoughts are coming through your head, okay? So just think about this for a second. As these thoughts are coming to you through your head, just imagine, imagine for a second that you're sitting next to somebody else and these are actually that person's thoughts. How would you associate with them, right? Like you would just sit there and you would watch it. It talks about how meditation, it, it's watching your thoughts like it's like when you're watching a movie. And I love this analogy too, because think about like a, a great movie that you've seen, right? Like I'm about to go see Star Wars this week and I'm about to have all the feels, just all the feels, I love me some Star Wars. But anyways, when you watch a movie, movies can, a good movie can invoke emotions, right? They can make you happy, they can make you sad, they can make you fall in love, they can make you angry, right? All these things, and like when you're really into that movie, all of these emotions are coming, but what happens? You then step back and you say, oh, I'm just watching a movie, that's all it is. And the trick is, the way we manage our emotions and even our symptoms of mental illness is that we start to watch our thoughts and our feelings almost like there's something on that movie screen in front of us. And that is just like a truly great place to be when we're able to just watch these things come and go. See, the problem isn't with thinking, the problem is with getting attached to these thoughts, right? So. Let's let's go back to like the breakup scenario. Oh, and James, that's a good topic. Let me touch on that in a second. Let's go back to the breakup scenario. Okay, so let's say you break up and now you um, you think about your ex, right? Now you think about, is your ex dating somebody? Then you wonder who it is. Then you start going through the Rolodex in your head of who you think your ex might be dating, right? Then you lock on somebody like, oh, she's probably dating that dude, right? And that dude's a jerk. He's a, like, I hate him, right? He's nothing like me. And then, and you've just created this whole fictional scenario in your head that is releasing cortisol in your body, which is a stress hormone, all because that one simple thought of your ex popped in your head. But imagine meditating, watching the thought of your ex come through your head, and then you just let it pass by. Now you didn't go create that crazy narrative. So James, so for those of you who can't see the chat right now, James says, I usually broke up with someone because I felt like I wasn't good enough for them in the long run. That's a big one. And um, so this is a process when it comes to self-love and things like that. Um, for people like me, it's how to forgive yourself. That's part of it. I had somebody coming at me um, the other day about one of my videos and they were saying how, you know, the topic I was talking about is a lot more complex. You know, it's not, it's not that easy. And it's like, I know, I, I'm not saying it is. And a lot of my videos need to be like, I hope people watch a lot of my videos because 
they tie into each other, right? Each one of my videos, because of people's attention span, I'm trying to give little tidbits of knowledge. And then you start taking these things and push, putting them together. I guess now that I'm saying it out loud, that's one of the reasons I need to make more courses to kind of put all this stuff together. But anyways, self-sabotage, right? Self-sabotage or this feeling of not being good enough. I, I was that way too. So they often say that you date at your self-esteem level, right? So if I feel like a piece of crap, I'm gonna date somebody who I think is right there with me because I don't wanna date somebody who I think I'm gonna pull down with me. Did that a million times. Or my brain said uh, that I would. Or I start dating somebody and then I see them excelling in life while I'm, you know, what I think is staying the same, right? And that's when we start self-sabotaging. And it gets to a point where it doesn't matter what the other person says to us. That, that is why self-healing is so important because we begin to realize that no matter how much love, right? No matter how much love the other person gives us, we never truly believe it, right? So they can say, no, you're fine just the way you are. You're fine just the way you are. And we don't fully believe it. And that's why it took me a long time of just working on myself. So now I believe that I'm good enough for the other person. But James, if you're still in here watching, like this idea of being good enough, let's talk about that for a second because this is a big topic. You know, a lot of people have self, self-esteem self issues, um, self-worth issues, all these things. Now. One of the ways that I heal myself, one of the ways that I ensure that I'm good enough for friends, for girlfriend, for my girlfriend, for like I almost said girlfriends, like I only got one, I promise, Tristan, if you're still watching, I only got one, just you, baby girl. Um, to ensure that I'm good enough, I do good things. Like I just do good things. And like that is like the, the best way to start forgiving yourself or to start having more... Um, um, self-esteem, self-worth, is to just start doing good things. Like, do one thing a day to help somebody else out. One thing a day. Like, I made a video a few weeks ago about the real gratitude challenge. Like, one thing that I hated about the holidays is like, everybody's all nice and tra-la-la-la-la around like Christmas and Thanksgiving and all this other stuff. Like, no, 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 no. Do that every day. Do that 365, 24 seven. What can you do for your fellow human beings? And every time you do that, it starts getting ingrained in your brain where you immediately do the right thing. And when you're constantly just doing the right thing and helping out um, like other people, just complete strangers, you start to start loving yourself a little bit more because you start to realize like, wow, I'm not that bad of a person, you know? Um, one way that, you know, makes it even easier for me is I'm held accountable by my son. I... I want my son to grow up and be a certain type of person, right? And in order for him to be that certain type of person, I do good things um, in front of him. And I explain to him why I did it. But he also knows that I do the right thing when nobody's looking. That's a big one too. Like I don't just do a nice thing in front of my son and then like when he's not around, I'm like, aha, now I'm not. Um, I just do it, and I explain to him my thought process behind it as well. I'm sorry, I was, uh, you might have just heard some playback from, or maybe you didn't, because this mic is really good. I was just trying to load the uh, uh, the chat real quick to make sure I was seeing them. So like, I, I hope if any of you are watching, I hope that helped, like, just do nice things. Like, I'm not saying like, go run out, don't like, like, well, if you want to, like, I'm not saying like, you have to overextend, you know? I'm not saying like, every day you gotta go like, travel around and like, feeding homeless people and stuff. It's like, if you just have the opportunity to do something nice, do it. That'll help you forgive yourself. That'll help you start thinking that you're good enough for other people. Because like, really, and this, this is gonna sound terrible, but you know, whatever like when you just start doing the right thing on a regular basis and then when you start comparing yourself to other people and you're like wow i do a lot of really nice stuff like i'm a decent human being and then you know and it sucks to like i'm not saying judge other people but i'm saying compare yourself to other people you know because when you start doing that you're like you start to realize where your value is 
it's it's interesting too because um, I was just talking to a friend about just uh, YouTube and numbers and stuff like that, and it's not like I'm obsessed with my YouTube numbers. I was when I first started, which was crazy, but. It's just, it's just a way to evaluate myself. It's like, am I doing something good? Am I doing something bad? How do I grow? Because I'm always trying to grow no matter what I'm doing. And it's the same thing just in life. Like I have to compare myself to other people to see, am I getting better? You know, I have to compare myself to where I used to be a year ago. I always tell people this, like I just wake up with one mission every single morning. Every single morning, I wake up with one mission and that is to be just a little bit better. Can you see how small that is? I wake up every single day with just one mission to be a little bit better than I was the day before. And that that is, that's worked out great for me. Um, so now like, you know, my girlfriend, she's amazing. She's fantastic. And like, I'm a pretty good dude and she's pretty amazing too. And I don't have to worry about all that judgmental talk to myself and all that stuff. And, you know, then sabotage my relationship thinking I'm not good enough and all that. Um, so how long has this been? Ooh, we've been on for 40 minutes. So, um, have you ever read into what happened? Uh, another question. Have you ever read into what happened to bipolar patients who have had a lobotomy? It was a scientific study about 30 to 35 years ago. And I did hear the playback. It's a, huh? <laughs> oh, and it's a great mic. I thought that was tying with the bipolar thing. No, James, I have not. But if you want to shoot me a message, uh, about this bipolar patients thing with lobotomies, like the lobotomy time and mental, uh, mental health treatment thing. Like that was a crazy, crazy time. I'm glad. Ooh, if we didn't get out of that, they probably would have lobotomized me. Um, but anyways, everybody, you're all beautiful. Uh, thanks for anybody who's been sticking around this whole time. I'm going to go, I'm starving. I might go play some video games with my son, but, uh, but yeah, if any of you ever, uh, have any questions or anything like that, make sure that you follow me on Instagram. You could DM me there. DMing me on Instagram is a lot better than trying to reach me through the Facebook page because the notifications for um, the Facebook like really suck. So go ahead and follow me on Instagram and shoot me a DM there or Twitter. It's the same thing. If any of you use Twitter, you can follow me there. So if any of you have questions or there's something that you want to talk about privately, or if there's a, a topic that you want me to go over in a future video, feel free to let me know. Um, because yeah, I love doing anything where I can help all of you. Um, I love when you guys give me topics like the social anxiety one I just did. That was based on uh, um, something a client's been asking me a lot about. So when you tell me what kind of uh, mental health stuff you want me to talk about, gives me uh, something to work with. And that way I know I'm just not making the videos that I want to make. I'm making stuff for each and every one of your beautiful faces. But if you haven't yet, head over to the Rewired Soul on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. And again, right down here, follow me on Instagram. All right, everybody. Love your faces. I'll see you later.